deep in the rainforests of Asia, a hidden sanctuary is fighting to save one of the planet's most endangered species. Despite growing to a length of two and a half meters and weighing in at over half a ton, the Sumatran rhino is the smallest of the world's five rhinoceros species. They were once found throughout the jungles of Southeast Asia. But poaching and deforestation have now restricted them to isolated patches of forest, scattered across the islands of Sumatra and Borneo. Fewer than 80 remain in the wild. And the fragmentation of their habitat means rhinos of a suitable breeding age have little chance of encountering one another. And thus, little chance of reversing the decline in their numbers that's been ongoing for many decades. With the prospect of extinction already looming, in 1996, the Sumatran Rhino Sanctuary was founded in the rainforests of Indonesia to help try and save the species. Because uh, Sumatran Rhino number are getting decreased over the years, now we are trying to breed Sumatran Rhino just to increase the number. And then in the future, if uh, we have a good habitat, we will be released back into the wild. Sumatran rhinos are solitary animals with a wide and varied diet. So keeping and breeding them in captivity is extremely difficult. When the sanctuary's breeding program got underway, only three captive births had been recorded in the previous 100 years. In order to mimic conditions in the wild as closely as possible and keep them safe from poachers, the sanctuary decided to provide each rhino with a large fenced-off area of natural rainforest habitat in which to wander. One of the first rhinos selected to join the breeding program was a female called Ratu. She was rescued in the uh, year 2005. She came out from the forest to the village nearby the forest. We rescue her because at that time we have a very, very severe uh, drought. After her arrival, Ratu was paired with a male called Andalus. Hopes for the future of the species now rested on this pair. Twice she fell pregnant. And twice the pregnancies failed. Then finally, in 2012, a male rhino named Andatu, the first captive birth ever in Indonesia. And in 2016, a sister, Delilah, followed. The birth of Ratu's calves is a huge step forward in efforts to save the species from extinction. There is still much more work to be done. But with a successful captive breeding program established and the consolidation of the fragmented wild population into protected areas, there is now a chance that future generations of Sumatran rhinos will continue to roam the forests of Southeast Asia. Now, meet a gentle giant. She's not waiting to get pregnant, she's waiting to give birth. This is Bihan, a one and a half ton Indian rhino at Whipsnade Zoo. She may look intimidating, but Bihan is a sweetie. It's hard to imagine that recently this big girl's actually been putting on weight. She's expecting a baby and she's been pregnant for almost a year and a half. At birth, Behan's baby will weigh as much as a fully grown man. Cue Veronica, her adoring and very patient keeper. 
Veronica has known Behan since she was a baby. She came to Whipsnade as a one-year-old calf, and Veronica has been a constant companion for 13 years. Um, yeah, she always likes to know what's going on, and if there's anything happening around the area, she'll always be up there trying to see what, see what it is. But she's very friendly, very friendly. There's such a strong relationship between them, it's no wonder that Veronica is concerned about mum and baby. It's been a 16-month wait and there are no guarantees. It is nerve-wracking but very exciting at the same time. You never can be 100% sure, as with all animals. They're very unpredictable. Some of them can have them very quickly and some of them have a very long labour. Big girly. Hello. <laughs> Indian rhinos have been around for some 10 million years. But hunters relentlessly shot them for sport. In such numbers, they were very nearly extinct by 1900. And now, although protected by park rangers, they're targeted by poachers for their horns. Over 70% of the entire world population is in one park in India. And if that park got hit by disease, flooding, civil war, it could be disastrous. And if that happened, captive bred rhinos like Behan's baby could offer a crucial safety net. There's a lot at stake and nothing is being left to chance. Behan is monitored night and day by CCTV so Veronica can keep watch without disturbing her. Very often if animals know that they're being watched, it will inhibit their birth. And it means we're, you know, we can always be on hand should the need arise for us to go in and assist her for whatever reason. But then it's just nice to be able to be there as well to, to actually watch the birth. So now the end game begins. Behan's baby will be just the third Indian rhino born in captivity this year. And right now, there's nothing Veronica can do but wait. This is four-month-old Manji an orphan baby white rhino that lives here at Care for Wild Africa. It's a nice, wonderful morning. Did you sleep well, my boy? Did you sleep well? A rescue centre founded by Petronelle Newvote. For me to be able to work with them and they allowing me in their space is everything for me. She has over 20 years' experience working with wildlife and his surrogate mum to over 20 rhinos. You can't play with me, my dog. You cannot play with me, I'm too small. <laughs> Petronelle's rhinos are all at different stages of rehabilitation. Some are large enough to roam free in a wild reserve. But rescue babies need care around the clock. Happy baby, happy baby, happy baby. And baby Manji is her biggest challenge yet. Manji means place of the stars. And he's a star. He's a star in my life. He's the youngest rhino that Petronelle has ever rescued. Okay, jumps in first, jumps in first. At just two days old, his mother was killed by poachers for her horn. And he too was attacked with a machete and received near fatal head injuries. In every rescue, the first 48 hours are crucial. Petronelle didn't leave Manji's side. He was so small and so skinny. The blood loss was immense. And I called everyone I know. I just know, hey, we're going to save this one. And after intense medical treatment, doctors managed to save him. Manji is the survivor of survivors. He's a brilliant little one. I'm very, very proud of him. And I love him. I love him to bits. Manji now needs to learn how to be a wild rhino. And Petronelle is determined that he and all her orphans return to where they belong. There was never a choice for me in looking after these giants. It's a journey. It's a lifelong commitment. I want them to be free. I want them to be in the wild. White rhinos are highly social mammals and a crucial part of their rehabilitation is to become part of a herd. It's time to come out. Playtime, playtime. Since arriving, 
Manji has been living in this small intensive care unit with other rescued baby rhinos. And Petronel is pleased with the progress he's making. You know, he will at one stage will have to fight for territory. So he needs to be strong in character. He needs to be a leader. And that's what I want and I see it in him. I can clearly see it in him. He's a fighter. He wanted to live. Definitely, he wants to live. But this will not be his permanent home. We want to release him back into the world. They hurt animals. They like the socialism. They play, they mud bath. If I see him doing well in that stages, I know he will do well outside there. Manji is now strong enough to learn how to fend for himself, and his whole world is about to change. I'm so proud of him, you know, I'm so proud of him. He didn't give up. So how can I give up on him? I will never, he didn't give up. Kenya, in Africa. The last two northern white rhinos. Poised on the brink of extinction. But can science save them? For the making of his BBC Seven Worlds One Planet series, naturalist David Attenborough traveled to the Old Pajetta Conservancy to film with the last two northern white rhinos. Once widespread, Najin and Fatu are now all that is left of this subspecies, which has been brutally hunted by poachers for many decades. Nearby is a memorial. Here, gravestones mark the deaths of some of the many rhinos killed by poachers since 2004. That's a particular sad one, Max. I think I may have met him. When David made his first wildlife documentary in the 1950s, there were over 2,000 northern white rhinos in Africa. Sudan, the last male northern white rhino. Now, only Najin and Fatu survive, and to keep them safe from poachers, they must live out their days under constant armed guard. Unfortunately, uh, these rhinos are under the threat of being poached for their horns, which has a, um, a market in, in the Middle East. A kilo can go with uh, around 6,500 US dollars. With no male survivors and both females unable to carry a pregnancy, Many people consider the northern white rhino to already be extinct. You watch them every day looking at extinction with just, you know, um, nothing much they can do than just accept the fate that you've allowed them to be in. But a group of scientists believe this need not be the final chapter in the northern white rhino's story. Right now we are here at Olpecheta Conservancy. Tomorrow is a, one of a very important phase of a project which is going on for more than five years. Using in vitro fertilization techniques, the scientists will take eggs from the last two females and attempt to fertilize them with frozen sperm, collected from two northern white rhino males before their deaths. If embryos are successfully created, they could be transferred to a surrogate mother of a different subspecies, allowing a population of northern white rhinos to be created, even if the last two females were no longer alive. The power of IVF is the multiplication factor. If we have embryos, we can multiply. We can have 10, 20, maybe 30 embryos a year and then place them in southern white rhinos and then uh, create a new northern white rhino population in a very, very short time. After years of planning, the procedure tomorrow will determine the future of this subspecies. 
we are confident that, that we will change the world tomorrow. It's the day of the procedure. First, the females are separated. The rhinos are then tranquilized. This is very good. In one, 100 milligrams. The team will have to work fast before the anesthetic wears off. This procedure has never been done before. New technology and ultrasound must be used to locate the ovaries. After four long years of preparation, the eggs have finally been collected. But this is just the beginning. They must airlift them from Kenya to the laboratory in Italy, where they will be fertilized with the frozen sperm. This procedure must happen within hours, so the journey across continents needs to go without errors. One month later, there is good news. The team was able to harvest 10 eggs, leading to the development of two northern white rhino embryos. Preparations for the right surrogate mothers to carry these embryos are now underway. Only time will tell, but there may yet be a future for the northern white rhino. I think the young generation is much more aware of what biodiversity actually means. We as scientists think we, we can help to rewind some of these mistakes and give the responsibility to the young generation. We we rather see a rhino without a horn than seeing a decaying carcass of the rhino. In South Africa, there is a ranger who has dedicated his life to saving rhinos from the poaching, which he has seen intensify over the last decade. My first experience with rhinos was on a picture in my grandma's house. It touched me because I was used to cattle and goats. I'd never seen something like so historic. From growing up, I've always wanted to be a ranger. It just feels like the right thing or the moral obligation to, to just try and do something because other than that, they're gonna be decimated. If we do not do anything, they're gonna be on the brink of extinction. But for Dumi and his team, fighting this war against poachers isn't easy. You get very angry. You don't understand why would a, a live human being do that uh, to an animal. And the only thing that is taken, it's a horn. It's a waste. Now, he is taking drastic action, doing everything he can to make them safe. It's very challenging. If there's a lot of hills and valleys and animals quite often end up um, going to the worst possible areas, things can easily go pear shape. Honing in on the target, it's time for the tranquilizer gun to do its work. With the rhino successfully darted, time is of the essence, and the team leap into action. Safely sedated and under constant veterinary supervision, the team began a process known as dehorning. It may look brutal, but this process doesn't hurt the rhino. Dehorning rhinos is a common way of reducing their value to poachers. The reasoning is, if there's no horn, then there's no motivation to kill them. It doesn't have any pain for the animals. It's like uh, trimming your, your fingernails, the rhino horn, it's keratin and you always cut above the growth point and the animal doesn't feel anything. New research is showing that dehorning does influence rhino behavior, but long-term effects are still unclear. In this recent time of such intense poaching, dehorning is an immediate, if imperfect, response to the problem. Rhino's horn is iconic, and such heavy-handed action is a last resort. But for Dumi, the alternative is not an option. It took a bit of time to get used to a, a rhino without a horn because to everybody in the world, when you think of a rhino, you think of its horn. But if it's the only way to protect them, and then we just have to live with it and 
So at the moment, uh, poaching is so rife, so the more we dehorn them, the more they are safer. We, we rather see a rhino without a horn than seeing a decaying carcass of a rhino. Safely and successfully dehorned, there's one final thing left for this rhino. A tracker is painlessly attached to provide the team with a constant GPS location for it, meaning they can keep an eye on its safety and whereabouts at all times. Unaffected by the procedure, the rhinos go about their life safer and far less likely to be a victim of a poacher, thanks to the team's intervention. But the war on poaching is far from over. If you believe in something and if you get threats, you, you, you can get scared, but uh, if it means losing your life in the process is part of protecting what you believe in, then so be it. It's a calling. I don't think anybody else can uh, stop a calling. It's something that we grew up wanting to do and we are doing it now and till the end of time. Definitely there is hope for rhinos. It's gonna be a long and bloody war, but I think the good guys will prevent.